next video will be the next installment for Undone, which is a short story, Batty. Chapter 5. The movement alarmed Philip and he threw his arms across his face. He was like a living book with its grey pages ruffling up in a storm. The two bats flew up into the air and swooped under the trees. Philip looked at me. Sorry. Philip looked at me in fear and then up at the circling bats. Without a word, he held his hands up to his mouth and started to whistle softly. The bats in the trees flew straight back and attached themselves to his hair. The others become calm. Sorry, I said in a hoarse voice. I didn't mean to scare you. There were lots of things I wanted to say. My stomach felt strange. I could feel myself blushing. I wanted to say something tender, something caring, something that would make us friends, or more than friends, but all I could think of saying was, have some cake. Philip stared at me and then at the cake. I could see that he wasn't sure. I wondered if he'd ever seen a girl before. I'm your friend, I said. I won't hurt you, I promise. He was hungry. I guess he that he hadn't tasted cake for a long, long time. Maybe he'd been eating bat food, fruit and moth and things. He gave a sort of a smile, only a small one, but it was enough to make my heart beat so fast that it hurt. Philip took a step towards the next piece of cake. He was starting to trust me. Maybe even to like me. As quick as a snake striking, he pounced on the cake and began munching. He ate like a five-year-old, shoving the cake in with both hands and smearing crumbs all over his face. If only I could get him to trust me, I might be able to talk to him, to make him stay. He swallowed the last crumb and then just stood there staring into my eyes. Slowly I took a step forward. It's okay, I whispered. It's okay. The bats murmured and fluttered. He was ready to run, but he let me approach. An invisible bond was holding us together. Ah, there was a terrible scream from the tree. A uh, branch broke a crack. The shadowy bird scene plunged down, grabbing at branches and yelling. He landed with a thump and lay there groaning. It was Dad. The bat scattered into the air like a swarm of huge bees. Philip's cloak was gone. He stood there naked. He glared at me. He thought we had tried to trap him. He raised his fist and then thinking better of it fled into the forest. Come back, I yelled. Tears flooded down my face. Please come back. But only the bat stayed circling above me, squeaking in fright. I ran over to Dad. Sorry, he said. I couldn't let you meet him alone. I had to keep an eye on you. Are you okay? I asked. Dad tried to stand, but he couldn't. Sprained ankle, he groaned. We both looked up the circling cloud of bats. They didn't know, seemed to know where to go. A sound drifted on the night air. Shh, said Dad. A soft squeaking whistle pierced the night. It was a whistling noise Philip made through his fingers. The bat squeaked frantically, circled once and flew off after the sound. Dad and I were alone in the dark, silent clearing. And that ends that instalment of Batty.